you so much. Macedongo, Pastor Paul Mohami, Margaret Michoki. Mom, God bless you. I love you so much and I thank God for you. Priscilla Wajiko, God bless you. Amen. Gena Macharia, God bless you, woman of God. I am hungry, ready to defend. I tell you, today is that day when the power of God touches our life through his word in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow will be very, very special. It's a time for prayer. 
and then thereafter at 10 to 12 we are going to have prevailing in tongues prayers so tomorrow don't forget that invite your friends but tonight is a night of power i see you pastor dina i see you ma'am god bless you esther i see you dr andrew machu god bless you sir amen timothy i see you amen james i see you olivia i see you gladys i see you i want to appreciate all of you modogo kenna it's always a joy to see you moses james god bless you so much sir amen please share the video let everybody come online tonight is a night of power my topic today is violent prayer violent prayer is praying violently fanaticism is it spiritism is it being crazy has violent prayer a place um in our victory uh transaction let's learn from the word of god i want you to open the bible for the book of first john 3 and verse 8 first john 3 and verse 8 the bible says he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen contrary to many bible teachers jesus christ is referred to us as a destroyer however he's a destroyer of evil works jesus came primarily his job description to destroy the works of the devil you need to understand the word destroy then you can appreciate first john 3 8 more powerfully now to destroy is not a merciful word at all to destroy means to reduce something into useless fragments to destroy means to injure or to damage beyond repair to destroy means to demolish to destroy means to ruin to destroy means to knock down to destroy means to tear down to dismantle to crash to waste to devastate to destroy means to terminate jesus is a terminator my god to destroy is to sabotage to destroy is to put an end to a particular thing to destroy is to kill to destroy is to render something ineffective to destroy is to defeat something completely to destroy is to consume a particular thing or to eradicate a particular thing that is what jesus came to do on earth his job description was to do all those things that i've spoken to you about to destroy is to erase to destroy is to extinguish or to stamp out so this is exactly what jesus came to do now the words i've read to you there is no gentleman spirit in any of those words they are all violent this is exactly what violent prayer is all about violent prayers are prayers that aggressively challenge the agenda of the enemy unfortunately brothers and sisters there is no gentle way of arresting anything evil you can say tafadari na kuomba al shabab wacha ni kushike now demons and satan are worse than al shabab and all the terrorists there is there is no gentle way to arrest a very aggressive destructive enemy violent prayers are prayers that fiercely challenges the vices of the enemy what are violent prayers violent prayers are prayers that do destruction to the works of the enemy therefore violent prayers are brutal prayers they are messy prayers violent prayers is a battle of gods battle of authors battles of kingdoms i'm telling you aha 
I remember I was praying for a particular brother. And uh, I was not even intending to make a long prayer. But the Spirit of God impressed in me to persist. And immediately, as I began to speak in tongues in capital, I began to say, but a paro shapara. When I begin to pray like that, I've entered the element of violent prayer. All of a sudden, a grandfather, his grandfather, spoke from his throat. And he said, I have an agenda to destroy this boy. Guess what? That ancestral spirit was revealed the moment I began praying violent prayer. Hear me. Sometimes water is in a jug and there is soil or dirt at the base. Until you stir the water, you may think the water is clean. Violent prayer stars the hidden enemy. That's why, brothers and sisters, if you're serious about permanent victory, not superficial, half-baked, short-lived kind of victory, today's sermon is for you. Violent prayers, I say it's a crash of kingdoms. Violent prayer is confrontational. Violent prayers insist what must be done must be done. Let's check Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Brothers and sisters, we have a desperate enemy. And that enemy is committed to steal, to kill, and to destroy as many lives as practically possible. He also has a sense of urgency because he knows he doesn't have a long time. So he's overworking. Now remember, every time the enemy or somebody has a sense of urgency or a sense of desperation, there is a renewed energy and vigor. I'm telling you, whenever you are told by your boss, we are giving you an ultimatum. But this time, the product must be here. The energy is renewed. The energy is invigorated. And the enemy knows he has a short time. So guess what? He's not losing any chances. Whatever marriage must break to him, it must break now. Whoever Christian must die, they must die now. Whatever church must close, it must close now. So we must stop playing nice to a nasty devil. Aha! But I came here to declare, I stand here as a servant of God. I decree every desperate agenda of the devil shall backfire on its own head in the name of Jesus Christ. One day I had an encounter with God alone in my room. I was watching a video and I saw somebody who had become dumb out of witchcraft. And a particular man of God were praying for them. And before my eyes, through the video, I saw them speak. I was so irritated. I said, Father, your power is real. I jumped from my seat and I screamed, Oh God, give me an encounter. <laughs> Before I knew it, that violent excitement and uh, demand touched the heavens. The next thing, in the next few seconds, I was on the floor. I hit the floor with a thud. The power of God came upon me. I hit the ground and I felt something come unto me like a cloth. When I woke up, I hit the ground so hard, by the way, even my fore face was paining here. When I woke up from that, because it was like a current, like I was electrocuted. When I woke up from the ground, I had the Lord tell me, I have anointed you. I was so blessed. From that day, I began to see very strange occurrences every time I begin to pray for people. I realized something. Even the spiritual world responds to aggressiveness and desperation. You want to be anointed? You can be gentle. 
There's a repo of desperation that God answers to. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. There's a feeding that comes only to the hungry, the full, comfortable, nice, religious. They cannot be filled. Aha. Violent prayer are prayers that insist what must happen must happen. Violent prayers are prayers that are battling with dark agents. Violent prayers are prayers battling with yokes and battling with strongholds. Violent prayers are militant prayers. Violent prayers are praying with holy anger. Violent prayers are prayers that turn demonic authors to swallow their own priests. Yeah, they are desperate, dangerous, holy madness and holy angry prayer. This is what the church, the enemy does not want the church to understand. Because there's a level of prayer you get into. You become too hot for the devil. Violent prayers are prayers that bring down the fire of God. They are the Mount Camel, Elijah context kind of prayer. What are violent prayers? Violent prayers are prayers that bring down the formula of desperate cry. Prayers that are in the category of holy madness. Prayers that arrest your arresters. Violent prayers are worse, charged with holy fire to fight spiritual wars. These are the kind of prayers that begin to declare enough is enough. You can't torment me any longer. These are the kind of prayers that swallow problems. I'm talking about violent prayers. Violent prayers do not negotiate. We don't negotiate with the enemy. We crush him. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I've given you power over scorpions and snakes to crush them, to dismantle them. Yeah? You can't do that with a gentle thing. You don't kill a snake by waving and say, snake, please die. You cut over the head, flatten it, then you burn it. Just in case the resurrection power comes upon it, you ensure it is turned into ashes. That's what you call violent prayer. It destroys. If you destroy an enemy, destroy him so hard, then burn him into ashes, cremate him. After cremating him, ensure that you spread ashes in different, uh, in different uh, rivers. Just in case the spirit of, of resurrection comes upon that enemy. These are prayers that stars the anger of God against your enemy. These are prayers that the woman in Luke 19 prayed. Judge, avenge me of my enemies. Judge, avenge me of my enemies. These are avenging prayers. Violent prayers are prayers to blast the altars of the enemy. You begin to cast every altar and command it to break into ashes. Aha! Violent prayers. They use the weapons of blindness against the enemy. You remember Elisha? He said, Father, may everyone that is coming against me, may they turn blind. And God answered that prayer. Mm -hmm. Violent prayer. They are prayers you use the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they overcame him. By the blood of Jesus Christ and by the word of their testimony. Violent prayers are the prayers that were declaring boils in on the body of the Egyptians through Prophet Moses. Look at men of old, they knew how to engage violent prayers. Violent prayers they make available the anointing of a breaker. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. Are you still there? If you are there, type Amen. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. The Bible says, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The anointing oil is made available when you begin to pray violent prayers. Violent prayers is to use the rod of God to break into pieces the gatherings of covens and witches and wizards. 
It's a destructive prayer. Violent prayer bring about terrifying noises and they chase the enemy out of their hiding places. Violent prayers cause people to break out of stubborn yokes and stubborn prisons. Violent prayers are adamant and persistent. You can't discourage a man that is anointed with violent prayers. Violent prayers is what some people call push. Pray until something happens. That is violent prayers. Violent prayers are beyond asking, beyond seeking. They are in the level of knocking. And as you continue to knock, you stop knocking and you break into. Because there are doors you don't open. There are doors you break into through adamant, violent prayer. Let me show you from the Bible that actually men of old, they were able to use this weapon to bring about dramatic turnarounds. Look at the disciples of Jesus Christ. Acts 4 and verse 31. Acts 4 and verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Brothers and sisters, buildings are not shaken by nice and lovely and pleasurable and delicate and I don't love shouting kind of prayer. Buildings are not shaken by don't mess up my makeup I don't like people who sweat a lot when they are praying. I'm allergic to people who pray a lot and shout a lot. God is not deaf. I am not a religious fanatic kind of comments prayer. No. Buildings are shaken by the power generated through violent prayer. With your religious ass, this is how far we have come. Compared to the fathers of old in the Bible, it was prophesied the latter church will be greater. But how do we have the latter church greater if the latter violence was greater than today's violence? We are becoming more religious by day. We use notes and books to read prayers that are not even from the heart. It is the fervent prayer that brings power, not the recited prayer. May God have mercy on us. Today I release the grace of violent Prayer in the name of Jesus. I command you to rise up from every religiosity and receive the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Aha. <clears throat> Aha. You know, one day I laughed. Several times, the devil can even make you to laugh. I was praying for a lady, and then the Spirit spoke and said, because you are just coming from three days of intensive violent prayer season we have three days of prayer we call them prevailing prayer i think we need to do those three days through um uh through uh online because things must continue and miracles must continue to happen so it was amazing this demon said i asked the demon because the lady was coming every day for those prayers i think she came one day or two days or something like that I said did you attend the meeting he said i did and how comes you never came out? What the demon said made me laugh. The demon said, I almost came out in one of the meetings. But then the prayers ended. I think the lady came late. Just shortly into the prayer, the prayers were over. So the demon said, I came, almost came out. But the fire went off when the prayer ended. And I remained in the body. Sometimes you have to be in a meeting that is in the, with the intensity of power, intensity of the anointing, for some things to break out of your life. Violent prayer avails supernatural power that terminates demonic power. I'm talking about violent prayer. Elijah prayed violent prayer. James 5 and verse 16. James 5 and verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 
the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The word fervent, brothers and sisters, is not a gentle word at all. It's a violent word. The Greek word for fervent is energeo. What does it mean? It's to put forth work. It means passionate. It means intense. It means vehement. It means emotional. It means enthusiastic. It means zealous. It means ardent. So hear me. That is the kind of prayer that is able to avail, that is able to bring dynamic power in its working. That's what message translation says. Violent prayer is what brings real supernatural power. Elijah was showing us the formula because through this kind of prayer, this man closed the heaven, put the key in his pocket. After the outmatum of the closed heaven, removed the key, opened the heaven. Can you see a man that is controlling the heavens? That man must learn the secret of effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. That is what brings the power that opens and closes the heavens. All right. Leave alone Elijah. Leave alone the disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Jesus Christ himself. I'm talking about violent prayer. If you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, the teacher must be the great example. Luke 22 and verse 44. The Bible says, And being in agony, he prayed more Fabentry. I just gave you the meaning of the word fabentry. It means in a jail, passionate, intense, vehement, emotional, enthusiastic, zealous, ardent. He prayed fabentry. He prayed so fabentry, and the Bible says, until his sweat became like great drops of blood falling onto the ground. Wow. So the word fervent here explains the intensity of the violence that Jesus did that accompanied his prayers. But the Bible says he prayed until he suffered what we call hematohydrosis, blood sweating. That is the intensity of the violence of his prayer. Brothers and sisters, people don't sweat in prayer when they're just talking nice and they're in energy source energy saving mode no you see even the way i'm preaching i'm sweating already in one way or another because i want to deliver with some violence Parasso. how do you preach violence when you're nice it's not possible brothers and sisters and it's not just physical violence it's spiritual power spiritual fire that's what the enemy cannot handle ephesians 6 and verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, when we check at this scripture, Paul was using the metaphor of a, a, a kind of an Olympic game that is called wrestling. Of all the kinds of fights, Wrestling is the most demanding kind of a fight. In wrestling, holding each other is allowed. In wrestling, you can knock anywhere. In wrestling, you can overturn. You can throw your opponent. You can do anything to your opponent. It is the most intense kind of fight. In wrestling, every part of your being is involved in the fight. Aha. So hear me. When the Bible says we wrestle, it tells you, brothers and sisters, it's an intense kind of battle. It's an intense kind of fight that is talks about violence. You can never see a wrestler that is nice and gentle. Aha. That is not enough. This scripture gives us the quality of the kind of enemies we are fighting. Look at this. Principalities. Powers. Rulers of the darkness of this age. Spiritual wickedness. These are not 
small enemies. There is an organized kingdom of Satan that is in opposition to God. That kingdom is committed to fight the agenda of God in your life. And it is terrible. Hear me. You can't be a gentleman when you're handling a violent, want to kill at any moment kind of a devil. The battle these enemies are engaging in, it's in the heavenly places. So it's not a physical battle. How do we get into the heavenlies? We do that through prayer. Aha. That means that when you want to fight this kind of battle and win, you must engage in violent prayer. If you're listening to me, shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. I say again, unfortunately, there is no calm way or gentle way of putting such violent aggressive and strong enemies to flight fight prayers are prayers that refuse to negotiate with the enemy james 4 and verse 7 submit yourself therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee the devil you don't resist cannot flee what is to resist is to stand against what is to resist it is to oppose there is no gentle way of opposing an aggressive enemy. Aha. <laughs> I was blessed by this testimony. Let me give it to you. A particular day was going to work. And halfway the journey is a, a, one of the members of a JCC Eastlands Commission. On our way to, to get to the job, on our way, halfway the journey, she suddenly became blind. Arrow of blindness was drawn to her. It was a very devastating time. I remember my wife and I going to pray with her in her house. She couldn't be able to see. The husband was holding her. But I loved her faith. Every day, she was engaging in a season of violent prayer. She would say, the enemy has taken, has, is trying to take my eyes, but he's not taking my lips. I'm going to engage in violent prayer. She would pray violently in the house. Then she'll begin to command her eyes. She'll begin to confess adamantly, I cannot be blind. When she went to the doctor, the doctor told her to get used to it. She might never be able to see it. But through her adamant prayers, violent prayer, one eye, one day began to see. She said, it's not about half a miracle. God does not do things halfway. She continued to violently declare, it's amazing. And I promise you as we speak today, both eyes are seen. I remember visiting her after both eyes were restored and she was the one who was cooking for us. Brothers and sisters, aha, those were arrows of witchcraft. If you don't believe witchcraft exists, you're not a good person. No. You are, you are, you are, uh, imagine, <laughs> you are overlooking too much. But hear me, even the worst witchcraft Violent prayer is able to break it and usher you to a place of your testimony. I declare whatever arrow the enemy is throwing into your direction, by the power of violent prayer, receive your miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Shambaratasa. Maraparia soparia nastida. Matthew 11 and verse 12. Matthew 11 and verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the man of violence shall take it by force. There are particular kind of men that are going to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. These are men of violence. Today I baptize you with the spirit of violence, spiritual violence in the name of Jesus Christ. Today I baptize your winner in a wrestling match. You are wrestling with the powers of Satan. You shall win and you shall be celebrated in the name of Jesus Christ. Violent prayers, brothers and sisters, they are unsanitized prayers. They are uncivilized prayer. They are gross off prayer. They are militarized prayer. And sometimes they appear to be very rude. 
to the religious gatherings. Violent prayers are intense. They carry unreasonable perseverance. We are engaging in violent prayer against COVID-19. And hear me, COVID-19, we shall take you down. We will outlive you. COVID-19 shall not see the end of you. You shall see the end of COVID-19. Your problem shall not see the end of you. Your enemy shall not see the end of you. You shall see the end of your enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Aha! Fight prayers are the only prayers that embarrasses Lucifer. They are the prayers that say adamantly, No, I cannot be blind. No, I cannot be blind. No, I cannot be barren. No, I cannot be jobless. No, I cannot be poor. That's violent prayer. It has an adamant power to resist every labor the enemy is trying to labor on you. No, I cannot die before my time. No, I cannot die of cancer. No, I cannot contact hypertension. It's called adamant violent prayer. Aha! Violent prayer says whether the enemy likes it or not are moving forward by force and by fire why don't you type i am moving forward by force and by fire in the name of jesus christ ha violent prayer they serve a warrant of arrest to all witches and wizards that are congregating to discuss your demise and you say that day they gather and mention my name fire would answer in the name of jesus christ that's violent prayer it's not nice prayer witches can handle somebody baptized in the spirit of violent prayer aha they silence satanic powers brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen are you battling a stubborn enemy you need to engage in violent prayer are you dealing with stubborn yokes? You need to engage in violent prayer. Are you dealing with very complicated issues? What you need is violent prayer. Are you dealing with serious witchcraft, evil programming? What you need is violent prayer. You need a baptism of violence, I'm telling you. Are you dealing with an aggressive enemy? What you need is violent prayer. Have your enemies dug your grave? That evil must be terminated through violent prayers. Are you a victim of consistent mockery? That spirit of mockery will be terminated if you engage in violent prayer. Aha! I had a testimony and I was blessed. This lady, this lady, Aha, was giving me a testimony. I was so blessed. Aha. This lady was tired of bed bugs. The bed bugs were too much and too many all over the house. You know what happened? <laughs> she took one of the bed. The, the, these bed bugs were very stubborn to, uh, uh, what do they do? To fumigation. And uh, she says she heard one of the bed bugs. And then she spoke to them and said, in the name of Jesus, you and your colleagues disappear. I'm telling you. She says the following day, there was no single bed back in the house. I'm surprised. I'll surprise you. I'm equally surprised. So many things are demonically oriented. Now, the reason why we avoid that as pastors because we feel if we say some of these things, then people will see demons everywhere. It's not always demons everywhere. Sometimes it's not demons. But I promise you, most of the things, they are programmed by demons, including insects. I prayed for people, and there were strange cockroaches, bed bugs. After the prayer, they disappeared forever. And those things were stubborn. And I'm left to ask myself, what is happening? A lady was saying that every time she would hear even voices, you can't watch TV you can't watch any someone on TV and all the Christian channels will disappear. After prayer, she went home and all the Christian channels were back. It's amazing. 
and it's without touching the area. And it's amazing. And I'm asking myself, Lord, what must we know? What must we know? What are we battling? Could it be some of the things we just call normal are not normal? Many things are not normal, brothers and sisters. I'm not saying we got looking for the devil everywhere, but we don't even have to struggle to look for him. He's everywhere. But then violent prayer will terminate, frustrate him, scatter him, and even cause him to vacate from your presence and your vicinity and your environment in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. Aha. I also had another testimony, beautiful testimony. This lady was praying. She discovered a pattern. She went to a meeting and the preacher preached and she identified with the pattern. Everybody in the family, they used to lose their marriages. Aha. Anybody who got married, sisters, either there, there was divorce or number two, the husband would die. She decided, you know what? I'm going to engage the teachings of my pastor and I'm going to secure this week and I'm going to have some time all alone and do some serious violent prayer. She began to pray. She would pray. The first day she prayed for one hour. When she prayed for one hour, it's a, it's a true story. Her grandmother called her and said, Sister so-and-so, so-and-so, what kind of prayers were praying yesterday night? Stop praying those kind of prayers. They are not doing us very well. And the lady was surprised. How did my grandmother know that I'm praying? Number two, how comes I used to pray nice prayer and she never used to say anything? So the following day, she prayed for three hours. Wow. When she was done the following morning, the grandmother called and said, I told you not to pray the prayer you are praying yesterday because she was praying in the enemy of my destiny. I command you scatter in the name of Jesus Christ. Let God arise. Let my enemies be scattered. She began to pray, praying the scriptures, praying violent prayer. The following day she prayed for three hours. Grandmother called and said, I told you not to pray this kind of prayers, but you're still praying. If you continue praying, you are going to have a dead person around here. Be very, very careful. Ah, she said, aha. But that day she prayed for five hours straight. She prayed, begin to get sweated, begin to speak in tongues, pace. The following morning after the third day, the grandmother was dead. Just to go to the bedroom of the grandmother and find out a bottle where had the names of all the sisters had been put and through witchcraft, she had sold the marital destiny of all the, all the girls in the family. She was the cause of the trouble. <laughs> Do you want the enemy to be exposed? You know what you need? Violent prayer. It was Paul. He put some sticks in the fire, lit the fire, and the snake came out. The snake will never come out until the fire is lit. The fire is lit through violent prayer. Today I baptize you with the anointing of violent prayer. Today I declare fire in your bones like Jeremiah. I decree you are a prophet of fire like Elijah in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody type amen. Aha. Hear me. Any person that is committed through witchcraft to put you to rest, today we declare they shall rest in pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. Violent prayer tells the enemy, if you dig the grave, you shall occupy it for me. You shall occupy it yourself. If you roll a stone towards me, that same stone shall be rolled towards you and crush you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you send arrows to me, those arrows will be multiplied times one times one thousand and pierce one own and will report in your own heart in the name of Jesus Christ. It's called violent prayer. When the enemy knows that you know these principles, you know what they do in their coven and the gathering of witches, they say, Please don't touch sister so and so. We don't want issues with her. I declare you are very hot for the enemy from this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen. I want you to give the last scripture. 
There's somebody I want to prophesy to. I prophesy to you. Your worst time shall turn out to be your best time in the name of Jesus Christ. Aha. Let me also prophesy to somebody. Any power that is contesting with the oil of greatness upon your hand, that power shall be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me give you final scripture. Because then, and this is a scripture that is a bit very amazing, very extraordinary scripture. Let me give it to you. Aha. Genesis 27 and verse 40. Genesis 27 and verse 40. You will live by the sword. Let me give you the background before I read. It was Esau who was widowed of his blessings by Jacob. All right? So Isaac blessed Jacob in place of Esau. So immediately Jacob took the blessing. Esau came, began to cry, cry, Father, don't you have a blessing for me? Can't you say a word of blessing to me? Don't you have even a, one left over, two blessings? Just say something. And the father said, I'm sorry. From today, you will be under your brother. You will serve your brother. But then he put a disclaimer. He said, whatever I'm declaring upon you, the yoke of servitude, there's something you can do and you can break the yoke from off your neck. Now hear me very clearly. Be very, very attentive. Aha. Genesis 27 and verse 40. You will live by your sword and you will serve your brother. But hear me, Mr. Esau, when you grow restless, you will tear off his yoke from your neck. In other words, I'm saying you'll be a slave, a slave for the rest of your days. You'll be poor for the rest of your days because of your mistakes, before, because of curses, before, because of the family you are born into, because somebody did something. Come on now. But hear me, Mr. Esau, I'm giving you the way out. The day you become restless, begin to shake your head, and say in the name of Jesus, I refuse this yoke on my neck. And you become restless. Hear me, brothers and sisters. To be restless <laughs> connotes violent fighting. It's shaking yourself violently. The day you become restless, you say enough is enough. You say I refuse the curses of my family. You say I refuse evil programming. You say things must change. Whatever needs to be done must be done. I'm going to stay here and fight until I get my breakthrough. The day you get tired of this yoke and you become restless, restless is shaking your head and shaking your neck. Ha ha, that yoke over your neck shall be broken. Hear me, until you become violent in the spirit, you say enough is enough. The enemy will keep on molesting you. But far be it, the Holy Spirit has sent me to let you know the enemy of your soul, his time has expired. That yoke you've been fighting with, the time of that yoke has expired. And what do you need to do? Number one, you need to give your life to Jesus. Number two, become a friend of God. Ask God to forgive you of all known sin. Repent all the sins. And number three, begin to engage in a prayer of violence. Begin to declare with power. And don't get tired. Day one day two, day three, whether you have to do it every day for three hours, for seven days, hear me, that violent kind of prayer that is full of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the enemy cannot handle it. I hear the Lord telling me, it's time for your release. Take it in the name of Jesus Christ. Your release will come through violent prayer. Esau, the day you become violent, the day you stop being nice, the day you say enough is enough, that day, the yoke shall be broken from off your neck. I want to pray. Lift up both of your hands. Father, I have spoken your word. Today, baptize your people with the spirit of violence. That violence that overcomes the tiredness of the body and says, I'm going to push even if I have to bathe with cold water. That violence that says, I refuse to be molested by the enemy anymore. May that anointing come upon your people. Today, grant your people power to disgrace their enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Tomorrow, 
you're going to have a very serious time of prayer. 7.30 to 8.30 will be prayer. Then from 10 to 12 will be prayer. Is it too much prayer? No. We are serious about victory and we're not negotiating with the enemy. Let's join hands. Let's conquer the enemy. Let's manifest the glory of God in our generation. May God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May God single you out for glory. In Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. I love you. Bye-bye.